Hi, my name is Pierre and today in this video I will show you how to use and operate the Parashot key systems from Lightit. So let's start by unboxing. So when you buy a Terashot key unit, you will receive the main unit, a micro USB cable and a DC power plug. Let's have a closer look at the main unit. For the purpose of this video, we're going to use a custom model, the TerraShot Key 600 UCS, stands for Ultra Compact Series, which is a fully integrated 600 GHz source. It integrates the RF synthesizers, all the multipliers and amplifiers to output high power at 600 GHz through this diagonal horn antenna here. At the back of the source, we have eight threaded holes, four M6 and four M4, to mount the source on the setup or on the optical table. And at the back of the source, we have the plug for the DC power supply, the micro USB cable, and this SMA connector is used for an external trigger of the source. So this is a custom source, but we also have a more flexible Terra Shot key, which allows you to have access to all the bands at 75, 150, 300, and 600. And I invite you to discover it on our website. So let me install all of this and show you how the software works. So I've installed the source on uh, four optical posts to uh, mount it uh, on the table. And let me show you how to uh, start up the device. First of all, let us plug in the micro USB cable. Here in the middle connector. And then let's plug the DC power supply. The connector on the back, the right. I have already started the software that you can see here. And the first step is to connect the software to the device. So we click here on scan devices. It sees, finds the devices automatically and the connected LED is on. So let's get an overview of uh, the software. So in this first tab called generator, you can set the frequency of the source, which is indicated here. And as a reminder here, this big button here lets you uh, turn on the source basically. So let's do that. So now the output is on and the source is emitting in continuous wave at 600 gigahertz. To change the frequency, you can either put the cursor here for uh, changing by step of one gigahertz. You can use these button as well, or the rotary dial here. You can change the frequency step for both the buttons and the dial from 100 hertz to 10 gigahertz, to 10 uh, exactly. And uh, for the other source, which has access to the four other bands, uh, you can change the band you're wishing to control here to 75, 150, 300 and 600. But this device is at 600, so we select 600. Let me now show you a few of the uh, added advanced functionalities of the source. Starting with the frequency sweeps. So by controlling the RF synthesizer, we're able to sweep the source uh, very fast over the whole bandwidth using this tab here, sweep. So there's four main parameters to, uh, for you to set. A start frequency, so for example, uh, 580 gigahertz. A stop frequency, let's say uh, 620 gigahertz. The step size in gigahertz. Let's uh, put, for example, uh, one gigahertz and the steps time here in milliseconds. So let's leave it at uh, four milliseconds. And you can see here we have a sweep of 40 points over 160 milliseconds. Very good. You can change the direction of the sweep using this button, up or down, so it's a linear sweep. If I plug, uh, if I press this button, sweep once, it will do one sweep, so over the 160 milliseconds or I can choose to sweep continuously. And here, the button, uh, the red button turns on, showing that the modulation is on. There's another possibility 
if you want something else than a linear sweep and use this sub uh, tab here called list here you can set manually up to 100 different steps of frequencies several ways to do this uh, you can insert manually here using uh, this table so uh, step 0 set the frequency you want 540 gigahertz for example uh, step 1 we go at 600 and let's add a third step at uh, 640 for example so by pressing here sweep continuously it will switch from these three fre frequencies every four milliseconds here by the step time you can also uh, read the table from the device if you have uh, memorized a table in the device before you can send this table to the, uh, the RAM, so the volatile memory in the microcontroller or in the ROM, so the non-volatile memory. It will keep memory even after you plug off the source. You can save the table to a file and you can read a table from a, uh, a file. So simply use any, uh, uh, for example, Excel and do your own table. I remind you up to 100 steps where you can do a sine wave, a square, a salt use, any kind of shape you want with these 100 points. So that's it for the frequency sweeps. So uh, let me show you now how to use the internal modulation capacity of the TerraShop P source. So to set these, we go to the modulation tab here in the software. We have two extra sub tabs. One is called pulse amplitude which allows you to do a simple on-off keying modulation scheme of the source and the other one is FM for frequency modulation. So let's start with the pulse amplitude where you can set the on time of uh, the pulse burst in microsecond, the off time here and the numbers of pulses in a burst here. It will calculate the total duration of the burst here and you can send one pulse burst here can also invert the pulse so you invert the on time and the off time and to send them uh, continuously we just press this button here and again you see that the modulation uh, button here red is on so uh, now I can actually show you and measure the output of the source using a pulse modulation to do this I will use this calibrated pyro sensor and I will use this oscilloscope to acquire uh, the waveform of the pyro detector. So uh, let's put the source in front of the pyro detector. And uh, turn on the source again at 600 uh, gigahertz. And we go to the modulation tab, the pulse amplitude. I've set here, for example, 20 millisecond on time, 40 millisecond off time one pulse in a burst and let's uh, do the pulse modulation continuously. So the detector now uh, sees these uh, pulse first. They are on time which is about one square which is here 20 milliseconds on the oscilloscope and it's off for about two division so 40 milliseconds. I can change those of course. I can increase the on time to 30 milliseconds and uh, reduce the off time to 10 milliseconds for example. And there you go. This is uh, the measurement of the pulse uh, burst modulation using the internal functions of the, the source. Now we can turn off the output, turn off the modulation and let me show you how to set the frequency modulation. So here we have three uh, parameters that you can set. The frequency modulation rate in Hertz. The maximum is four, uh, five kilohertz. You can choose either a chirp or a sine wave modulation. Here you will set the frequency deviation. So the maximum plus minus frequency in megahertz. For the source at 600 uh, gigahertz, the maximum 
frequency deviation is 600, uh, 960 megahertz. And again, to start this modulation, press this continuous FM button, right here the modulation uh, button is turned on. So that's it for the internal modulation scheme of the TerraShot resource. So uh, finally, let me show you how to use uh, the external trigger to trigger the source. And for this, I'm going to use this function generator here, which outputs over this SMA cable uh, a 15 Hz square wave modulation. And in order to trigger the signal on this pin, uh, you need a CMOS 3.3 volt signal at the maximum. I've set here the generator to output 3 volts just to be safe. So it's set it at 15 Hz, 15% uh, duty cycle. I've plugged the SMA connector here on the back on the source to trigger it. And to configure the software to use the external trigger, I will go to the trigger tab here. I will select of the triggers here, digital RF on off, okay? Meaning that on this pin, when the signal is high, the source will emit, and when the signal is low, the source will be muted. So let's try this out. I go back to generator and press output on. And you can see on the oscilloscope, the output of the signal when the source is externally triggered. So we have a waveform, uh, square pulses with 15 Hertz uh, modulation uh, frequency. And now let's see how the power evolves if I change the frequency. So uh, let me use uh, steps of one gigahertz, for example. Uh, I can go down and you can see the power will increase a little bit and will decrease depending on the frequency setting here. So I can move, maybe find a, a maximum, for example, here at 585 gigahertz. And here on the oscilloscope, I have 50 millivolts per division. I have something like three and a half uh, divisions, meaning I have a total signal uh, peak to peak, which is 175 millivolts using the conversion of the calibrated uh, pyro sensor, which is 65 volts per watt, I can deduce that the power of the source at 585 GHz is above 2.5 milliwatts. So let's change a little bit uh, the, the frequency more. Let's uh, go back at uh, 600 and uh, move upwards from there. Again, you can see the power changing with the set frequency. And I can also change here the frequency uh, of the uh, RF uh, generator, it's 15 Hertz. I can go to uh, 25 and 35. And then at some point I will be limited by uh, the slow response of the uh, power sensor. So uh, there you go. I've shown you how to measure the output power of the source using the external trigger. And finally, I will show you how to shut down uh, the source. So at the end of the day, or when you're finished doing measurements, uh, most importantly, the first step is to put the source off. This will cut down the RF uh, synthesizer, so no RF will be fed through the multiplier chain. The output will be off. And only at this point, you can uh, close the software. And finally, unplug the DC power supply, the micro USB connector, and the SMA signal for trigger. And the source is off and uh, that's it. So thank you for watching.